live streaming as a space is still very young and evolving now the way the business is evolving is that come for the content but stay for the community for example ninja he is now not aligned with any one particular platform whether it's a twitch youtube or facebook he's saying he'll simulcast on all three platforms at the same time so the streamer shouldn't use his entire energy in building a particular platform but he should take ownership of his own content and build his community and his brand Hi this is Shubham Tiwari I'm the community manager of 1000 Faces Club and I welcome you to this special edition of the Fireside Chats on Fireside Chats we feature journeys and playbooks of uh, digital creators as well as experts on creator economy our today's guest is a prominent name in sports and media he knows uh, how to conceptualize and commercialize you know commodities and ideas he has been uh, one of the key drivers of mega projects and events like IPL ATP tennis Lakme Fashion Week, for example, currently is heading Streamo, which is India's first live stream sponsorship marketplace, connecting brands with Gen Z on YouTube Live and Twitch in a native, innovative, and scalable way. I'm talking about Tushar, as you can see. Welcome, Tushar. Welcome to the show. Hi, Shubham. Great to be on the show. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? <laughs> Very well. Just uh, you know, recovering from a bit of cold. So. Other than that, doing very well. Thank you. We're really grateful to have you on the show. So, uh, Tushar, we are talking about streamer. We are talking about streamers. So, please tell us who is a streamer. So, essentially, uh, streamer is a is a young, uh, upcoming creator who's uh, very different from a normal, uh, you know, creator who creates normal uh, VOD content, which is video on demand content. A streamer is particularly someone who focuses on on live content creation. so you know the the focus is is on creating live streams uh, which are predicated on different popular games uh, these are mostly last man standing genre games like pubg mobile uh, free fire uh, valorant uh, and the whole format of the content is long form video so if you see a normal creator he'll create you know clips which, which are maybe you know few minutes long but this creator this streamer he creates 3 to 5 hours of live stream content each day so that's the huge difference in terms of volume that this streamer uh, is able to create right and and if we speak about streamer how many streamers uh, does streamer have at this point in time all right so we're a young uh, and upcoming startup uh, you know we started in uh, 2020 uh, august when the lockdown was still on so so far we've got approximately a base of 10000 uh, live streamers across the length and breadth of india uh, you know these cover pretty much all games uh, both you know boys and girls uh, across uh, different pc games different mobile games and uh, we'd say that 5243 out of these are ones which are active which regularly stream you know either uh, you know few times in a month or few times in a week and they also regularly participate in in our campaigns which are uh, sponsored by brands right so so if we take it you know forward tushar how does a streamer work for you know let's say a, a streamer who's looking to monetize his efforts so how does it work can you give us an overview of that All right. So essentially, uh, Streamo is a creator economy marketplace uh, which focuses on solving the very big problem of lack of creator monetization. You know, in India, as we see, there are so many thousands of creators, and much of our work is on YouTube, which is really at the heart of the creator economy. So we have several thousand, you know, creators creating uh, game content and streaming it live on YouTube. but they're not able to monetize their craft they're not able to monetize their passion with you know with which they're uh, working and playing right so we come into the picture and we help them monetize their content in a non intrusive in a passive manner so that you know the brand uh, sponsorships or the brand insertions appear inside the live streams in a very uh, native manner and they look nothing like a traditional uh, advertising format which is as you know is you know skippable yeah. uh, blockable yeah. and stoppable right and as a pre roll or a mid roll which we all see on youtube all the time yeah so because it looks nothing like a traditional format you can't you know uh, get rid of it so it works for brands and brands are also able to communicate with uh, you know the audiences that are watching such live streams which is 
predominantly Gen Z, Gen Alpha, very young people. And obviously, these guys are very, you know, evolved audiences. They're not like, because they're playing games, they're very used to, you know, technology, working with gadgets. So they're very, like, they're very grown up in that sense. Right. So they don't like to be, you know, shown ads, which are very, you know, like traditional in that sense. Then they apply ad blockers. Right. So the whole idea right. is that uh, we connect streamers with brands and we do it in a way that, you know, it's 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 very uh, integrated. It, right. it doesn't, uh, you know, interfere with any of their uh, work. Yeah. So are you saying that in a way, a streamer does not even have to interact with the ad that is, you know, being placed on his stream? I mean, does he, uh, does he or she have to, you know, actually, you know, stop their game for a moment and talk about the product, anything? No, no, absolutely. Great question. So I think the beauty of this whole engagement is that, you know, while the streamer is streaming, he's playing three to five hours every day inside the live stream at different intervals of whether it's 15 minutes or 30 minutes, the brand insertion will pop up and it'll be, it'll look nothing like a traditional ad, which is, you know, stoppable or blockable. So it doesn't interfere with the streamer and the expectation from the streamer is also not to do anything extra. I mean, you know, he is already engaging in a very interactive, unscripted, no holds barred conversation with his communities of, you know, uh, friends and fans. So the whole experience is that engagement is already on, but he doesn't have to do anything additional for right. the brand. Right. And the brand's ability to speak to the viewers is through their, you know, being creative Creativity, and being yeah. native and innovative. Yeah. So Absolutely. if you see, uh, you know, some of our work that we've done with uh, Amazon or with Netflix uh, or with Crocs, the, the way the brand positions itself inside the live stream is that it becomes synonymous with the live stream. And it is not an extra effort for the streamer to do anything at all. Right, right. It's so cool. I mean, it's amazing how, you know, it's simple. It's very simple and so, you know, creative. It's amazing. So uh, if we come to, you know, streaming specifically, can you give us a qualitative difference between Twitch and YouTube in India? Because these are the two, let's say, the big players when it comes to streaming, other than Facebook and, you know. Yeah, sure, sure. So... I think the uh, live streaming as a space is still very young and evolving. And, but, you know, having said that, there are three big dominant players across the world. So it starts with Twitch, which is owned by Amazon, which is the global leader uh, with the highest amount of uh, market share. Um, in India, YouTube is the elephant in the room uh, with 450 million monthly active users. And also... Twitch is very buggy, uh, you know, in India, it doesn't have local encoders and is not available in vernacular, which is the strength of YouTube. So therefore, a lot of the community is still uh, focused on YouTube. Right. Second, I think, uh, you know, from a discoverability point of view, because we focus on, you know, the middle class or the long tail of, of creators. So the whole uh, aspect of not being able to keep the content on Twitch beyond a two to four week or a six week time frame doesn't allow for discoverability because YouTube has this huge VOD library. All the live streams are actually stored for eternity on the uh, VOD library. And that allows in discoverability of young and upcoming creators. So that's a huge, huge plus. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, in fact, YouTube is kind of now, uh, you know, catching up with Twitch in this space and is, uh, literally kind of, uh, you know, position to leapfrog Twitch yes. in the future. And uh, the last one is that uh, Twitch is, uh, you know, is is, uh, is is a front runner in terms of monetization, uh, in terms of some of the features which allow, in, you know, gifting a channel uh, subscription to a particular community fan uh, or things like that. But again, YouTube has now been able to build those tools not exactly replicate those tools in the same sense, but focus of YouTube has been on community building because community is very important. Yeah. And one of the big advantages of YouTube in doing that is they're actually using the trifecta of uh, long form content, uh, VOD and uh, uh, shots in a, in a triangulated manner that allows the creator to you know, get discovered uh, for viewers to, you know, snack on short form content and mm -hmm. then feast on live stream long form content. So that whole mechanism is working beautifully for YouTube. Right, right. 
but you know when it comes to uh, <clears throat> live streamer pay it, uh, it can be youtube it can be twitch facebook i mean you know there is no clarity on that front because i'm uh, i think i'm speaking on behalf of every streamer at this point so why is you know streamer pay sh- uh, shrouded in such a you know mystery at this point in time like we are in 2022 about to go in 2023 so why is there a lack of you know uh, insight into that so i think uh, it's a good question and i think uh, the uh, objective or the goal of all of these platforms is to really you know position themselves as uh, benefactors of the creators and the creator economy i think youtube started their youtube partner program 14 years ago which is one of the oldest ones and is one of the most you know dynamic ones which works in a very uh, kind of a demand and supply mechanism and is not just a you know doling out of incentives uh but again the space is so uh new and it's still evolving and therefore a lot of the structures and strictures are still getting developed and you know chastised into proper models and uh, there's a lot of you know experimentation there's a lot of you know two steps forward and one step backward still going on yeah. so i feel like it's just early stages right now but uh, broadly i feel like you know the 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 split is always in favor of the streamer if you see uh twitch i think it's around you know 50 50 youtube is i think 68 32 in in favor of the creator so i think broadly that's the framework but again it's you know it's it's evolving right right so uh when it comes to you know uh, making uh, brand deals and platform partnerships what common mistakes up and coming streamers make and how do you address them yeah, right so very good question i think the biggest uh, mistake from a brand uh you know association perspective that a streamer makes is um the product creator or the product streamer fit you know sometimes you know you ha- you are a streamer and you know your community of fans and friends that watch you on a regular basis but those fans and friends are not interested in let's say you know in cricket but you still go and work with a brand that is let's say uh endorsing or advertising a product that is related to cricket so that fitment is very important like just you know purely going on vanity metrics and saying that okay you know i have this much audience and these are my followers these are my subscribers and entering into brand uh sponsorships doesn't uh, make for a very strong long term thought through strategy so obviously uh, the second also applies to the platform partnerships if you see a lot of the young and upcoming streamers in india and also because the industry has been so young have actually you know gone on to partner with some of the home grown uh, platforms in india right like uh, the likes of uh, loco and rooter which mm-hmm. are uh, funded by you know private equity and venture cap money so i think um, you know there is a need to kind of look at what's happening internationally like for example ninja for example he's one of the top you know streamers in the world uh and he is now not aligned with any one particular platform whether it's a twitch youtube or facebook he's saying he'll you know he will simulcast on all three platforms at the same time so that basically shows that you know the streamer shouldn't use his entire energy in building a particular platform but he should take ownership of his own content and build his uh, you know community and his brand uh, and and i think while doing that they can uh, have a more deeper focus on youtube which is literally like you know their point of origination and from where they've kind of found uh, you know way into the yeah. creator economy because youtube's uh, partner program is the most you know coherent one it's it's really solid and uh, youtube doesn't delay payments it's it's a it's like it works like a very well oiled machinery so uh for creators also consistency of payments uh you know consistency of building community uh consistency of content and then keeping that content for the long term i think youtube plus one or two other platforms could be a great uh, way for them to go right right wonderful so uh if i you know ask you uh, how do you do this you know matchmaking between brands and you know and a particular let's say streamer because uh, uh, i mean as you just mentioned like you can't just go by the vanity metrics so you do you have any you know uh, let's say criteria to fit you know a brand with a streamer how do you do that how do you do that matchmaking so uh, essentially the the lion share of our streamers are between 1 to 10000 uh, subscribers on youtube 
so for these guys it's important uh, to you know get exposed to as many brands uh, and to get a sense of how to become more brand friendly how to you know uh, take more brand sponsorships and uh, and deliver them so for these guys there isn't like a really like a you know a mechanism or a model at the moment uh, i mean the idea is to literally just you know get them acquainted with more and more brands so that they can you know uh, they can see themselves as a creator who's actually you know making a buck from their passion and it's right. not just about you know playing games and not being able to uh, monetize but uh, some of the bigger creators who you know we work with likes of guys who are above 1 million subscribers or you know some of them are above 10 million subscribers so for these guys i think it's very important to understand their true value and appeal you know that intrinsic appeal that they have with their community and then connect them with those brands you know uh, for example we have uh, there's a, a streamer who who's very much into anime for example okay so you know he's uh, he's very uh, excited about doing stuff with anime products and and you know so we we would then go in and partner him with those kind of brands then there is a streamer who's very interested in uh, in coffee like every morning he has a ritual of drinking a cold brew coffee so you know we can uh, kind of work with him and connect him to a brand that allows him to actually place a coffee mug on his table every time he's streaming right. or so stuff like that i think that's the whole idea like if you see one of the creators that we don't necessarily work with him but ankit pant for example he's all about health fitness and well being right yeah he's is he's, he's uh, also playing games but he's also taking care of his health so for a brand like him he's you know obviously gravitating more towards like you know smart watches that would measure the health uh, parameters step sleep and stress of a streamer and be able to improve his output both qualitative and quantitative right yeah. so so that's how i mean these uh, you know partnerships are forged it's amazing amazing i mean partner partnering with these uh, uh, you know streamers who work for i mean for hours and hours and they're creating so much content so much space you know they're giving for the brands to uh, you know showcase their products so i mean it you know my natural question is like you know the next phase of influencers virtual influencers we are talking about in southeast asia for example they have already you know started to take a very big space so um, in india as well i mean i came to find out about this virtual influencer called kaira so kaira they are you know doing brand deals partnerships with them it's amazing so uh, <clears throat> live streamers are also going uh, you know that way they are creating their virtual avatars and you know putting them to use on screen and so first of all what are your views on this trend uh, i think it's a fantastic uh, opportunity for you know streamers uh, particularly gamers who kind of you know been in the uh, you know in the in the basement of their parents house and who are not very interested in revealing their identities um, also for streamers who are you know bogged down by several hours of content creation every day for them to be available you know at different places and do more with their brand uh, through being a virtual influencer and uh, also like i think it's just uh, is this incredible like how uh, you know this uh, this space is growing so much i think it grew a lot um, before the lockdown and in, in the lockdown it made a comeback it's been very popular uh, particularly in in the anime uh, circles as well so i feel like there, there is a lot of uh, growth that is going to happen gaming already it is you know already present we all use our yeah. avatars when we game whether it's on discord or whether on any other platform but i think fashion is a category that is going to take off like anything um also uh the metaverses for example uh, that's another huge space so i feel like th- there is a lot of uh, potential but again i think the the key thing here is to keep the balance between you know you being a virtual influencer and also kind of staying authentic and true to your yeah. cause and the purpose of why you started creating content in the first place yeah i mean it's really amazing that you know the influencers these virtual influencers have also you know ages i mean i've just found out like these virtual influencers have like this is 
this year, this much years old, this is this, that much years old. So, I mean, we are trying to make things very, you know, let's say uh, in a very good manner, I guess. We are, we are being very honest about these avatars and, you know, putting ourselves uh, for others to watch. So, I mean, uh, just an extension of this uh, question is, you know, the mental health as well as the physical health, right? Because these guys, these people are playing for hours and hours. They are breaking their backs, essentially, for us. So how do you keep the streamer well-being in the scheme of things? Because they might get the incentive that, you know, streamers bringing us, you know, partnerships. So let's play more and more. So how do you make sure that they don't, don't you know, uh, put themselves on the line? Right. So I think, uh, you know, our uh, focus has been on uh, helping them with the most important aspect which is monetization of their craft and once we were able to achieve that to a certain degree uh, and consistency we said okay you know what more can we do for the creators and help them become the better versions of themselves and that's where we realized that like you said uh, you know financial well-being mental well-being uh, and in general like health and you know uh, fitness of the creator all of these things are very critical to their overall you know, output. So uh, like, you know, everyone is doing in the industry, we've also started taking up these uh, causes and we're doing it uh, with some very big uh, domain experts in every respective category. And we're also bringing in brands to champion those causes. So for example, in uh, in the area of health and fitness, we partnered with Titan Fast Track, where we focused on improving the you know, the health and well-being parameters of streamers by measuring their sleep, stress, and steps. Right. And, you know, connecting that to the overall output. Uh, and then we also work with the uh, man company, for example, to kind of propagate a more, you know, gentlemanly conduct on the internet, not just, you know, talking about, you know, uh, using uh, profanity yeah. or sometimes resorting to abusive language. So literally like, you know, telling them that you need to create content, but with care and conduct yourself like a gentleman. So whatever we're doing is we're, you know, trying to amplify those uh, initiatives uh, along with brands as well. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and I think now, um, you know, our, our, the way the business is evolving is that come for the content, but stay for the community because there's a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, new connections are being forged, you know, and because all of these guys are streamers and they're all live streamers. Yeah. So for them to find another one like them, and start, you know, partnering with him and other friends and creating content it becomes like a fun uh, way of, you know, growing their community and cross pollinating audiences. Yeah. So that that whole, you know, movement is kind of taking off on its own. Right. And uh, we have a question from Akash who's asking how much streamer earns from Streamo if he or she is running a brand campaign. So I'll just add, uh, you know, another part to this question. You just mentioned that, you know, in your community of streamers, mostly, you know, the streamers uh, have, you know, 1K to 10K followers, right? So let's say a creator who has 5K followers, how much uh, money they will earn with Streamo in a typical brand oh, deal? Yeah. Right. So typical brand deals uh, last for a, you know, month long uh, campaign. And what we've seen is, if a streamer with a, you know, between one to 10,000 subs streams for almost, you know, 15 days of the campaign, I think he can easily make, you know, 10,000 to 15,000 rupees in a month, uh, depending on, you know, some of the variable factors, plus minus, that is the kind of money that, you know, a streamer could make. Obviously, the beautiful thing of our platform is that it's all based on, you know, views and impressions. So we're not, we're not like, putting a fixated expectation on a streamer that you have to do right. 120 hours like some of the other platforms yeah. or, you know, you have to like kind of, uh, you know, do a certain uh, number of days. We're saying whenever you want to stream, whenever you are, you know, connecting with your community, uh, whichever day of the week, whichever day, uh, whichever time of the day you want to stream, you can come and stream and, you know, during the campaign, you can monetize your uh, live stream uh, yeah. passively. So that works very well for them. And we have a lot of people who have full-time jobs, uh, Shubham, people working in TCS, Ernst & Young, uh, HDFC. So they have jobs during the day. And in the evening, they would actually stream to yeah. their friends and family and you know just jump on a live stream. So for them, our model works very well because they're not like, there are, there are days when workload is heavy, so they don't stream. And then there are days when they stream, they're able to you know earn passively. 
<laughs> do you also stream tushar uh, not yet i haven't started as <laughs> yet but i want to uh, i want to start and you know we've been doing some uh, community hangouts with some of our streamers just discussing right. on how to go about this but uh, but yeah that's on the cards do you have any games you have your eyes set on do you like anything to play yeah i like pubg i like uh, <laughs> i'm actually very fond of minecraft um, yeah. but uh, Ooh, minecraft yeah. uh, is, is not such a you know like i don't i don't know how to stream it yet but uh, but yeah i mean i am i am kind of like a, a more like a, i would say yeah more in the process of getting there wonderful so speaking of processes uh, another question what's the complete process of registering uh, on streamo all right so the process is very simple and very quick you just log on to our website streamo.media we don't have an app or anything like that you go under the platform you enter your first name last name email address phone number your discord id and you register you receive an email in your inbox you configure using that email your obs with our uh, widget link which basically puts the layer of brand uh, sponsorship in your live stream and you're ready to uh, stream after that and you can also configure your payment details uh, google pay or you know whatever you want to enter either, even a bank account works and you know you're ready to stream that's right, it right, right. so i think uh, you know uh, in an extension to this event we are also thinking of doing a master class with tushar so in that you know uh, uh, session Tushar can even show the entire process of registering on Streamo, so that we absolutely can later on. So another question is: Can you help us creating uh, in creating small YouTuber community by hosting event or something else? So I think this is a question to both of us. We are also uh, you know trying to uh, make headwinds in creator econ economy and help you know YouTubers and build the community. So let's let's you know take another question related to community Tushar. You have your community yes. of streamers. So can you give us you know what was the method uh, you followed to create this community? How did you you know start approaching these streamers and how it is you know went from 0 to 1? Right. So I think uh, you know when we started my own background is in you know uh, sports and media and I've been uh, working with lots of uh, advertisers and different cricket boards and helping them connect with each other and, and create, you know, synergies out of that. So when uh, the lockdown started, we said, okay, can we help, you know, these young and upcoming talented gamers who are, uh, you know, playing games for so many hours at a stretch, but they're not getting enough monetization because the CPM rates of YouTube in India, one of the lowest in the world, India ranks at yeah. 71st, you know, even lower than uh, Bangladesh and Pakistan. So we said, can we, you know, play a role there uh, where we can, you know, give them uh, the value for their content and their time? And that's when we started, you know, uh, approaching streamers who were, you know, kind of managed by some talent agencies, streamers who would be on YouTube, who would start, you know, just uh, uh, kind of appearing on YouTube. We would send them out cold emails. We would make phone calls. We would talk to other platforms. So we literally kind of, you know, tried every trick in the uh, in the book to reach out to streamers. I think the reaching out part was hard, but once they heard our, you know, proposition, they were convinced that, you know, this is such a non-intrusive, very effective way of monetizing. Um, and and that's that's how we grew. And then the quality of brands Shubham, that we've been working with. Yeah. These are like a sign of, uh, you know, uh, kind of an indication, like we get messages from, you know, a lot of uh, gamers saying, we're so happy to work with Netflix and Amazon. Yeah. We just want to show our parents that, you know, we've been able to associate actually with uh, yeah. associate with them. And this yeah. is a meaningful career. You know, playing video games is not just, you know, time down the drain. Right. So that, uh, and and then also seeing some of them get their first paycheck, you know, uh, from Streamo, that is a huge, uh, you know, plus for us. And that kind of emotion has kind of, you know, uh, gotten circulated in the community and uh, more and more streamers are coming on their own. Right. Amazing. So uh, Sunana is asking, uh, can you share some trends we might notice in uh, game uh, live streaming industry in 2023? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, I just attended one uh, meetup uh, on creator economy. And I think one of the key trends was, you know, live streaming is going to be really, really prominent in 2023. I think, you know, people are really bored of just consuming content passively. And I think, um, live streaming allows for that authentic, interactive, unscripted, no holds barred conversation. Um, and also it's about connection, right? Like, I mean, 
with game live streaming i think you know sunaina we're just providing the context like for example shubham and i would go and do bowling so we are actually catching up together but the context is bowling it's not about bowling right so uh, i think with game live streaming that's the big advantage that you know um, you're able to uh, literally have a very interactive experience um, and the whole idea is that it's it's a long form content so you know you're not um, uh, like doom scrolling the whole day yeah. but you're actually uh, able to you know build fans and uh, communities and also the last man standing genre you know i don't know if you guys are familiar with the hunger games and you must have watched squid game yeah, on netflix yeah. so that format is very gripping you know like people landing on an island picking up the uh, guns and starting to kill each other till they become the last man standing that format is very 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 uh, exciting and has become a very intrinsic part of the internet culture right yeah. so i think that is again going to you know juxtaposed with game live streaming it becomes like a very potent uh, medium for uh, audiences for creators and for brands right so tushar in a way you're saying that community is going to be the next big thing in a live streaming right if we summarize Absolutely. everything community right? is going to be the next big thing and i think it already is such yeah. a huge thing i mean community is at the heart of the gaming ecosystem like even during the lockdown we saw that you know the whole community came together and they fundraised for different causes you know whether it was uh, you know oxygen cylinders and not being available in a certain hospital or any of these other you know causes right. so i think the community is at the core of this particular uh, ecosystem wonderful and if i ask you about streamo what new things you are planning uh, for streamo in in the next year so streamo i think from a brand uh, perspective we're looking to further optimize the technology you know further uh, provide more features to the streamers so that they can actually uh, get more uh, control over the uh, platform uh and also we're looking at uh, you know giving more options to the advertisers and marketers so that they can integrate the streamo dashboard directly inside their uh, trade desk so you know they can buy uh, media directly from there right that's amazing so these are all the things that are coming to streamo any message you'd like to give to your community yeah i think you know one of the things that i really uh, passionate about is to like use this uh, phrase of the 3 c's don't uh, complicate don't uh, uh, you know uh, don't uh, confuse and uh, just you know keep things simple and have fun i mean the idea is that you know don't criticize don't complain just have fun and enjoy the process i think that's that's what you know i would suggest right right and i hope uh, we all hope that the community of at streamo grows uh, and you know helps as many uh, streamers as possible and uh, thank you and lastly tushar anything that you want to talk about which we missed on in this conversation you can before i ask you to nominate the wonderful <laughs> people like you for our show no I, i'm very grateful for everybody who joined the you know uh, to join this uh, session this fire chat and i think great work to you guys uh, at 1000 uh, faces club you guys are doing a phenomenal job in terms of i think bringing the creator community together uh empowering them with you know great quality content uh, that allows them to navigate and innovate through this you know lonely journey of content creation uh, yeah. and kind of get a sense of belonging sense of purpose i think those are very important things and no other uh platform or no other you know community is doing that so i think that's huge what you guys are doing and you know it's i think you guys are also a young small team right so it's yeah. uh, it's ha- hats off to you i mean i've seen the quality of work and everyone's that uh, coming across your work is really applauding it and and the newsletter and you know the instagram page all the stuff that you guys are doing is fabulous thank you so much tushar i hope you know the audience uh, they really find some you know time to check out our work as you just mentioned and yes. they all they already are so i'm um, i'm really thankful to you and all the support we're getting from others one last question related to gen z of course uh how yes. to reach the gen z audience that's a question from god or bot so i think the you know the gen z audience is a very hard to reach audience they're not watching television they're not watching ott platforms they are applying ad blockers so it is always obviously a huge challenge to reach them but again i think the way to reach them is to through community building uh and and you know through connection uh and through interaction so that's that's literally my you know kind of two cents on how to reach gen z 
Absolutely. You have to actually give your time uh, in reaching out and speaking with them. And of course, listening to them. That's the, uh, the no. Absolutely. And I think the one thing is that, you know, this concept of super fans or the thousand uh, true fans, right? Oh, yeah. Which yeah. also relates to uh, your uh, name. club's name. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I think that is very important. Like it is not about just collecting followers and, you know, getting, you know, likes and uh, all of that. I think it's about forging, you know, real genuine connections with your fans and friends and kind of delivering, you know, value to them um, and kind of growing in that whole, you know, endeavor and process as as you go along. I think that's the thing. It's, it's, uh, it's moved away from literally just, you know, kind of pushing... Uh, advertising and peddling a product to actually community building uh, and, and solving for problems. Wonderful. Tushar Garg, thank you so much for giving us insights into uh, the streaming industry as well as what you do at Streamo. In what ways you're empowering you know, streamers and bringing this very simplistic solution to a very, I mean, very, very interesting space. So thank you so much for coming to the show. And we wish you- Thank you, you Shubham. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for attending. And I hope you guys uh, had some, you know, some questions answered. And uh, yeah, hope to stay in touch with everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here on uh, All right. this live session, as well as when you're watching this video. Thanks for supporting. We'll see you in the next episode of the Fireside Chats. Thank you. All right. Thank you. See you. And cut. That's it for today's episode, guys. If you really liked it, please subscribe to the Thousand Faces Club and press the bell icon below so that you don't miss any videos from us. Thank you.